Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about that. How do you switch between the current period calculation and the YTD calculation in case you need to do so? Let's just take a look at the Power BI file that I prepared and you will understand it better. All right, so I'm in the Power BI file, which contains the data and a little case study here. You can see that we have year and the months here. And against every single year and the month, I have total sales presented. Now, this is good enough, but let's just say that I wanted to switch between the current period sales and the YTD sales, maybe through a selection button. So the user should have the selection ability. If the user says, show me the current sales, he sees the very sales that are appearing on the screen. If the user says, hey, show me the YTD, this sales should actually change and should actually show the YTD sales. Now, there are two ways in which you can solve this problem. The first one is gonna be plain vanilla DAX solution, and I'm just gonna show you that. We'll also take a look at how can you solve this problem dynamically using a calculation group. Let's just get started. All right, so the first thing that I need to be able to solve this problem is the ability to select on the screen. The user should be able to switch between the YTD and the current period calculation. So I need a slicer here. And if you already know, the slicers can be created on a column of a table. So I need to have a table that gives me two options, the current period and the YTD. And I've already created that table. I'm just gonna show you that real quick. So I'll just go over to the data tab right here. In the data tab, I have something called as a selection table that I have made. Very, very simple table that I have done. A curly bracket, the first value is current period, the second value is YGD, and this actually forms a table with just one column with two values that are going to be presented in the slicer. So now that we have a table with just one column, I can make a slicer on top of that. I'm just gonna maybe go over to the visual and maybe insert a slicer. So in the visualization pane, I pick up a slicer. In the slicer, what I will do is I will drop that value column, which contained the two values that I had created. So current period and the YTD. All right, as of now, nothing really happens on the screens once you actually pick up either of the two values. You can see that none of the calculations are actually changing. We've just made the slicer. We have not built a calculation that actually takes an account of what is selected and then performs a particular calculation. So let's just actually do that. I'm actually going to come to the sales table and create a measure that takes a look at what has been selected and performs the calculation of either doing the current period sales or the YTD sales. So let's just maybe call this as measure, doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to write the switch function here. The expression that I'm trying to test here is the true expression. That means whenever the condition becomes true, then do something. So I'll just write a true here. And the value that I'm going to check for is what has been selected in the slicer. Take a look at what is selected. So I'm just going to use the selected value function and I'll say, hey, why don't you pick up the value column of the selection table uh, and see what has been selected. So if the current period has been selected, that's the text. In that case, I just want to show the total sales, which is one of the measures that I've already created. If the YTD has been selected, then I would like to do the YTD calculation. So this again, and I'll say that if this value is equals to YTD, then run the total sales, but just don't do the vanilla sales, just do the YTD sales. So I'm going to use the total YTD function here. Total YTD asks you for the first part as YTD for what? What is your expression? So I'm just going to mention the total sales as expression. And then it asks you for dates. Where are your dates? So I have a calendar table and which is where I have a date column. Close that bracket and then this is good to go. And I'm just gonna close the bracket and commit to this particular formula and I'll press enter. This is a measure that has been created. Let's just drag that measure to our pivot table and let's just see what happens. So I'm just gonna maybe drag it and you can see that it actually shows me the YTD, the sales are being totaled like a running total over and over again. Now, if I change that calculation to current period, it actually shows me the total sales value. If I pick up YTD, it actually shows me the YTD. Now, there could also be a possibility when the user actually selects none of the two. And in that case, it actually shows you a blank because in the switch function, we left out the part where the user has not really selected anything, right? So I'm just gonna go over to my measure and I'm just gonna say that if uh, neither this condition is true nor this condition is true, then what? Then I just wanna show my total sales calculation. So I'm just gonna say result three is going to be nothing but my total sales. Now, if none of the two conditions are true, only then you will just see the sales that have been calculated. So press enter. And in case nothing has been selected, you can see that I just get to see my total sales value. Now this solution is good enough in case you just wanna carry out this particular switch calculation only on total sales. But what if you wanted to make the same calculation on the units as well, which is another measure, or maybe some other calculation as well. So you'll have to write multiple such measures for you to be able to do that, which is where you'll keep on changing the total sales here and replace that measure with any other measure, which you will try to switch between the slicer. Now let's just jump over to something called as calculation groups and let's just see how calculation groups can help us automate this calculation, make it more dynamic. 
All right, let's just take a look at the second approach of calculation groups. Now, calculation groups cannot be created in Power BI. You have to use an external tool called Tabular Editor to be able to do that. I'm just going to go to my external tools ribbon, and that's where I have my editor installed. And I'm just going to click that and open the instance of Tabular Editor. It also gives me a bit of warning that you know you might want to save your uh, work before you start working with the editor and you might just actually want to do that i'm just going to hit on okay and start to create the calculation group you can see that the entire model all the tables all the measures have been loaded and i can just see the entire model right here i'm just going to right click on this and create a new calculation group alternatively you can also use the shortcut alt 7 to be able to make a group doesn't really matter so a new calculation group has been created let's just give it a more meaningful name so i'm just going to call this as sales not really a sales but current period or ytd calculation group and i'm just going to open that and create a new calculation item in that particular calculation group now if you remember the reason why we shifted from the dax approach to the calculation groups approach was that i wanted to make this entire thing dynamic meaning tomorrow if i want to switch between the ytd for units and not really sales i should be able to do that by not creating another measure right so calculation groups is actually going to help us do that but the dax that we have written as a measure is exactly going to remain the same with a slight bit of tweak so I'm just going to call this new calculation item as say actually current period or YTD and write an expression here which is actually going to do that. So if I just go back to my Power BI and take a look at this measure, in this measure we have hard coded total sales and to be able to do total units I need to make another measure to be able to switch between YTD for units and YTD as the exact current period number. So I'll just copy this very calculation control C to copy that. And I'm just going to paste that calculation right here. Now, in this calculation that I have pasted in my tabular editor, I will just make a small change. And I will say that, hey, this total sales, which has been hard coded, why don't you pick up the calculation that you're actually seeing in the visual currently? So in the visual, I could have total sales, I could have units, I could have any measure for that matter. And I'm just going to write the selected measure as one of the placeholders, which is going to actually work on the measure that has been placed in the pivot table and here also in YTD also the YTD will not happen on total sales it will happen on the measure which is placed in the pivot table so I'm just going to write selected measure and of course the total sales is also going to be selected measure right let's just format this tax and I'm just going to hit save and the changes are going to be then carried forward to my power bi you can see that I now have this calculation group table and it also asks me to refresh this particular thing now so I'll just hit a refresh and escape this measure we don't need this anymore and now what we're going to do is we're really going to, going to carry this column that we have created which is the name column which is where the calculation has been fed and I will just drag that into my pivot table in the columns area of the pivot table right and you can see that it actually gives me the current period or the YTD and as of now since we had dragged total sales in our value section of the pivot table this is actually doing the calculation on total sales let's just see in the first place if this works or doesn't work so I'm just going to pick up YTD it actually shows me the YTD which is absolutely correct if I pick up current period it actually shows me the current period which is also correct this is working fine just like the DAX that we had written earlier now let's just substitute the total sales with total units and let's just see that if this dynamically changes the YTD for units or not because we replace total sales with the selected measure and currently our selected measure is not going to be total sales but total units so I'm just going to come over here and cancel out my sales or let's just keep both so let's just also drag total units right here so I'll just drag total units and you can see that it actually shows me both the calculations total sales and total units for the current period because current period has been selected if I switch that calculation to YTD I get to see the YTD for both of them not only the current sales but also the total units so I can have many many calculations inside of my pivot table and then I can switch dynamically between the current period and the YTD and just one calculation group is enough to switch between all the measures that I have placed in my pivot table. All right, that was all about how do you switch the calculations between the current period and the YTD. We learned the tax approach. We also learned the calculation groups approach. Let me know if you have any questions around this and I'll be glad to help. In the end, a quick shout about my DAX courses. In case you would like to learn DAX right from scratch and then build your fundamentals first and then move on to solving more challenging, more sophisticated problems, I highly suggest that you take a look at my DAX course. It's going to be extremely beneficial. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comment and I'll be glad to reply. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.